Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, <laughs> this is it. Yeah, yeah, it's really it, I swear. <laughs> This is episode, uh, is this 14 or 15 of the Mortal Kombat 2 restoration? And yes, we're gonna be working on our old friend, the Hantrex Polo Monitor. <laughs> now actually, we're gonna work in the garage today. Uh, it, the weather's actually kind of okay. It's like in the 40s. So we're gonna go outside and we're gonna continue working on the Hantrex Polo. And yes, in, in the previous part, um, the Polo, actually, we've been working on this monitor for a year, okay? It's, it's been in shutdown and and uh, in the last video, we found a bad film cap. So in this video here, we're gonna replace all the film caps, replace the hot, and see if we can finally fix this Hantrax Polo, because once we do, we can move on to the rest of the restoration. So anyway, enough of that. Why don't we just go to the garage and let's get to work on the Hantrax Polo. All right, guys. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. Yeah, can you believe it? <laughs> it's like 40 degrees outside, but warm enough to work out here. So, all right, I have the Hantrex Polo monitor out here, and um, I guess let's kind of review. Because uh, the last video, we basically went through this flow chart here. And, 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 and by the way, if you guys missed the previous videos, the monitor is in shutdown. Okay, we did a cap kit, we replaced the flyback, but when we turn it on, the thing shuts down and we have no neck glow or anything and we hear a ticking sound. And if you go through the flow chart here, it basically ends up uh, no blown fuse, okay. And then, and then it says here we have a shorted hot, which we replaced. And then it says uh, shorted diodes, which we tested. And then it says to check these caps right here, C172, 174, and 175. Now, when we did the full cap kit on this monitor, I pretty much assumed that we replaced those caps because why wouldn't those be in the cap kit? Well, turns out they weren't. Um, so when I was looking at the flow chart last summer, we completely overlooked the caps. And there's three caps that are actually right here. One, two, three, and that's C71, C72, or oh, C72, C74, and C75. It turns out it's these little film capacitors here. Now in the last video, we tested these with my LCR meter using the ESR function. Um, so if I put it on ESR here, right there, and frequency, Ian told me I should be testing this stuff uh, at 120 hertz. Um, it's more accurate uh, for most caps. Um, so anyway, if we we're coming here to test these caps, and uh, there's no polarity on these caps, by the way. So it doesn't matter where you put the positive or negative leads. But, okay, so this one right here, it says eight picofarads, and we have no resistance, okay? So this cap is open. This one is bad. And, and this cap right here is supposed to be 3.3 nanofarads, and right now it's seven picofarads, and we have no uh, uh, a, a, a series resistance ESR is equivalent series resistance, and basically the higher the resistance, supposedly the less life the cap has, but every cap is different. So anyway, this cap here is bad, and if we were to test the other ones, so this one's supposed to be 12K. No, 12 nanofarads, and it is, and our resistance is 4.8 ohms, three, it's kind of bouncing around. I think with the higher frequency, um, it moves, the ESR moves a little bit more. Like if we were to put it on one, I think it's sampling less oh, often. Well, now it is moving still. So we're at a 120. So I think this cap is fine. So we have... Wow, it's going from 10. Well, we'll compare it to the new one. And then here's the other one. We tested all three of these. These are the three that are on the flow chart. God, it's all over the place. It's five nanofarads. This is supposed to be eight. 
Let's compare it with the new caps. Um, so I ordered these on uh, Mouser, and the form factor for these two caps right here is a little different than what I pulled out. They're kind of these little chiclet ones. But let's just kind of see here. So this is the three, this is the 8.2, which is this one. And then this is the, let's see, this one here is 12K, which is 0 0.012 farad. Okay, and but they're different form factor. I don't think it matters. I actually asked Ian and he told me to get these. Alright, so this one right here is the 8.2, which is this big one. Let's kind of just test it and see. So there is the ESR. Why is it negative? I didn't see that before. Is it because the frequency is what it is? Let's see. So it's around 5 ohms. And then it's right on the money, 8.1. It's supposed to be 8.2. And then if we were to compare it to this one, it's only five. So yeah, we should probably use this one. I kind of wish it was the hard plastic guy, but they didn't have it. Um, I, I did find the bad one, though, in the hard plastic kind of film cap. I'm trying to do this so we don't mix these up here. But the big one right here goes goes right here, right, right here. Let me just double check. So, yeah, that's 174. Yeah, 174. All right, so let's just put this guy in. I'm gonna replace all three. Okay. Just don't want to mix this shit up. All right, where's my solder? So we'll take um, our flux pin right here and just kind of put a little bit of flux on that. All right, so let's solder this guy in here. We do have to replace the hot, too, because I pulled that off a while ago. It does feel good to be out in the garage, I'm not going to lie. All right. just want to make sure that's kind of sitting in there nice. It's a little chilly though. I got a much later start than I wanted today, but it's pretty late already. Alright, so that's in there. Let's see if I can find my side cutters. They might be in my toolbox. Hang on, let me grab my side cutters. All right, I got these. These aren't my favorite, but they'll work. All right, so that one's in. So let's continue on. All right, so let's move on to the next cap here. Um, I want to do this one, which is C172. 
and that's the part that was blown. So here's the new one. Now this one is the right form factor. It's the kind of the chiclet plastic. I guess it's not the chiclet. It's just kind of a plastic film cap. And again, I got these at uh, Mouser. And if you look at the cap here, it says, well, this, it says 3N3. And the N is actually like a decimal. So it's 3.3 nanofarads. Okay, so let's, and also on the marking is 1600, so that's like 1600 volts, um, and then I believe J on, it says, it says 3N3J 3 3 1600, so the J I believe is the tolerance, and 1600 is the voltage, and then I learned after researching this after the last video, is that the position of the N is actually the decimal, and it's a nanofarad, so it's 3.3 .3 nanofarads. So if we were to come here and test this um, and read it with our meter. So I put on ESR. I'll just stick it right in here. So with, with this meter, you can actually test with these leads or you can stick it in here. Um, I Actually, Ian told me to stick it in here instead because this adds resistance. Um, and frequency, 120 hertz. Okay, so this is 3.3 .3 nanofarads. And I don't know why I'm getting negative resistance. So it's low, though. It's like bouncing around 7 ohms to negative 3. So with this reading, too, um, every cap is going to be different. Every manufacturer. To really know what the correct ESR is, you almost need to get the data sheet for each cap. Um, and I guess the idea is that the highest, the higher quality caps are going to have lower resistance uh, ESR out of the factory. And then over time, as they age, that resistance goes up. And so when you have the data sheet, you can see from the factory it was supposed to be, you know, three ohms. And now it's 30 ohms. And you could say, oh, wow, this thing doesn't have any life left. But again, it's all manufacture and part dependent so there are kind of like general charts out there that i found that says oh a you know uh, a 2200 microfarad cap 150 volts is usually around this and you can use that as a guide now i guess over time as we use this more we'll kind of get a feel for what's good and what's bad but if we were to take this one here that we already removed now these leads aren't long enough so we're gonna have to use this um now this one it's seven picofarads and we're getting no ESR at all, no resistance. This cap is completely open. These two points are not touching. Um, so therefore we know for sure this cap's bad because we're not even getting a reading. So anyway, let's go ahead and, and replace that. I, I think this is a really handy tool to use, but some of the information though, it's like you don't really know what to do with it because um, we don't have the data sheet. Okay, so this one goes here. And again, I was worried I was going to mix these up, but I, don't, I know that the blown one's right here, so that has to be this one. And then the big one goes here, and the other small one. And then when you're ordering these parts, too, you have to the lead, uh, the, the spacing for the leads here. I believe this is 20 millimeters, and the longer one is like 27 millimeters. And these caps don't have any polarity at all. So let's see if we can get this guy in here. So I'm trying to line this up. It's not easy. There we go. Okay, it's in. So I got to just kind of carefully tack this in because it's going to just fall right out. So I'm going to take my soldering iron here and just kind of load the tip up with some solder. And we'll do 
just tack it. Where's the other lead? Oh, right here. Oh. Oh, right here. All right, it's in. So let's go ahead and solder it a little bit more. Okay, so that one's in. All right, so we've got one more cap to go here, and we could test this out. I really hope this fixes it, guys, so we can move on. All right, so the next one is this one right here, and this is. 0.012K and our replacement is 0.012 microfarad. Oh, the K is the tolerance. So it's 0.012 microfarads and this is 630 volts and the one we got is 800. So this is 0.012 microfarads or 12 nanofarads and the ESR is 2 ohms. This one seems like it's pretty good. The other one did not. It seemed like it was kind of borderline. Let's test a new one. Eleven point eight nanofarads, and then the ESR is jumping around around one ohm. It's very similar to the one we removed. So let's just put the new one in. Okay. Yes, I'm sick. I'm sorry if I'm sniffling. So that guy's in. All right, so we've replaced all the caps now. Does it work? Well, we can't power it up yet, though, because the hot is not installed. So I actually ordered these from eBay, BU508AF. The thing is, I lost and cannot find the little metal retainer thing that straps this thing to this heat sink here. But this new part here is, is, is self-insulated. Um, so I don't know how much heat's going to come off this thing. So we'll see. But again, I can't find the... Uh, there's like a little metal strap thing that, that holds this to the heat sink. You can see like on this cap over here. So I brought it in the basement before the last video, and I don't know where I put it. That See that little strap? So we're supposed to have one of those on there right here. But anyway, let's just install this guy. It's pretty much right against the heat sink. Even if it's not. Okay, so this trace here was blown out. And I have a little jumper wire, so let's um I'm 
to zoom out a little bit. So I'm just kind of holding it in place while I kind of tack one of these legs. Okay. All right, and I have a little jumper wire here that I'm going to solder the leg to. Did I just pull the jumper off or no? We'll have to get our meter to see if that's a good connection there because I can't tell. All right, let me grab my meter. Hang on. All right, so let's test this here. Put this on continuity. And we have it. This goes over here. This just goes to this whole plane here. So this goes to, yeah, okay, it's fine. All right, so let's trim these. All right, so we're ready to start putting this back together. Did we fix it? I have no idea. Sure hope so. God, I don't remember how this thing goes back together. Should be some screws. So there was like a, uh, I believe there's a cage that goes over this, this thing here. I don't know if we really need it. All right, that's on there. So let's go ahead and put the neck board back on. So. Look at all these connections here. So we've got this here. I believe that this can go in at one of two spots back here. Right there is one. Does it flip the picture? Let's see what it says. I'm not sure, I don't recall. I think that one of these green ones is right, obviously. And I think m maybe one's medium, maybe one's standard, I, I doubt it, but, or it flips the yoke. It, I think that's what it does. All right, so that's in. So the neck board, does it have a ground wire? I think it's already connected.
Oh yeah, here's the ground wire for the neck. Where does that go? So there is a ground wire for the neck. I think it goes on this. There's a spade connector. See this right here? There's a little spade connector on the neck board it plugs into. Right there. Okay. So the neck's on. So now we have the degauss coil, which I guess goes right. Oh no, this is the power. Okay, the degauss coil plugs in right in this corner over here. All right. So everything's plugged in. We just need a video signal and power. And then we might have to switch the yoke depending if the picture's upside down or not. And then we have this guy right here we got to plug in. Um, it's probably a good idea to discharge this. I know it's been disconnected forever, but still, let's just do it real quick here. Just gonna just do a okay. Just want to do that before I put my hand there. All right, so that's on. This thing here, we got to zip tie the degauss coil. It's kind of hanging out. Not sure if I have any handy. All right, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so I need to figure out a way to plug this in. So I think I'm going to pull the turtles out, and we'll use that power, um, the isolation transformer on the turtles, to get power to this thing. So let me do that real quick, and I'll come back. All right, so I got this monitor on a table. I have the turtles opened up in the back. And we're going to use the isolation transformer in the turtles to power this monitor because you cannot just plug this into the wall. Um, so let's kind of come over here. It's a little tight. I got to clean the garage here. All right, so here's the power coming from the turtles. Right here. And we're just going to plug that in right here. Okay, um, we're ready to do this. So what we want here is neck glow and no ticking. All right, you guys ready? There's no board in here or anything, so we're just using the isolation transformer. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh. Something's happening. I heard something. It went... Oh, we got HV. Um... I don't know if it's working. Let me turn the light off. So the neck glow. Yeah, we have HV. I can't tell if the neck is glowing. All right, hang on. Let me get Crafty Mech's uh, test unit. And we'll put a video signal on this thing. Oh. Did we fix it? I don't know. It didn't sound right. <laughs> the sound it made didn't... You know, if this thing isn't fixed, I, you know what? I don't know what the heck I'm, I, I'm probably going <laughs> to take that K7000 out of the power drift because I can't handle this anymore, guys, if this doesn't fix it. There's that thing. I thought I just saw it. There it is. Okay, so so 
we're going to take this thing right here. This is the uh, TPG test pattern generator. Um, Yeah, I'm just making a connection here. So this thing has four and two, so the it's RGB and ground and then sync wires. So it's going to go like this. Boy, the spacing on this is such that I can't get these on here. All right, it's on. All right, here we go. Yeah, I don't like that sound. It's like psh. Oh boy. <laughs> well, guys, you can fix it. <sighs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> oh, we did it. It's fixed. It's working. <laughs> I didn't think we did. I really didn't think it happened. Oh my God. All right. All right. All right. This is good. <laughs> oh. I'm feeling positive. This is really good, guys. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's clean up the monitor a little bit. Oh my God, yes. I'm so happy. <laughs> I wanna thank, uh, well, I gotta thank our, the, the tech at Arcade Club first, because he's the one that told me to change these caps, and then, um, and then all the people that sent me that email um, with the video to the sunken canoe video that covered this same topic. But you know, these caps don't you think should be in the cap kits? Boy, this thing's dirty. Obviously, when you're spraying Windex on here, just make sure it's on gets on the tube and not on the chassis. <sighs> I'm so happy right now. We can really move on now. <sighs> All right, let's see if we can dial in the monitor a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust the uh, focus on the back. <sighs> Is there a curl here? What's going on? Let's see if we cycle through the, uh, the patterns. I think it's this button. All right, so let's adjust the focus. All right, that's the that screen. Oh yeah, that's a good picture. That's gonna be a really good picture. And then the colors here, red needs to come down. And blue. Let's see what other generator. What else we have? Green looks really obnoxious. So I'm looking at the um, the neck board here, and there's a red and a blue pot. No oh, green. You see that? Right here. So I'm adjusting the red and the blue, obviously, with the red and the blue, but where's the green? Where's the green adjustment? Weird. And then look at the neck, uh, the remote board. What a pain in the butt this is. You gotta get Allen keys in here? That's a stupid design. Like, how could someone, like, easily, like, in the field, adjust this without a separate tool? I don't know. All right, let's come back up here and take a look. 
Let's see if we have a better... So it seems like there's a bit of a curl here. I think the vertical size is too... So this is supposed to fill the whole screen, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can adjust this. So... So that's that. God darn it, I need to get um, some tools here to adjust this, hang on. All right, I just got like a little bit here and this is vertical amp. So that gives us the vertical size that we need. Okay, so now let's, so now we're filling the whole screen. Blue, white. So we got a bit of a curl here on the top. I'm sure we can get rid of that with an adjustment. Let's see. Oh, there's brightness and contrast on here, too. Okay, so there, we were missing that whole grid. Horizontal frequency, there, that straightened that right out. So when we get this in the Mortal Kombat, we'll obviously do... We'll do the proper adjustments here, but let's see if we can get that a little bit more in focused. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's not a bad looking monitor. I think it's going to look really good, actually. <laughs> we finally did it! <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop. Yeah, we have to stop. It's, it's, it's late and it's cold. Um, so next video, um, we're going to start putting everything together now. Now that we have a working monitor, it only, only took a year, but it works. And I'm very, very happy right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks again to everyone that, that told me to look at those caps. And I foolishly skipped them because... I thought I replaced them because they were caps listed on the flowchart and I did a cap kit. So I think these caps need to be become these these caps need to get into the into the cap kits, I think. So all right guys. Oh, we did it. So all right, let's go down to the basement, do some viewer mail, we'll hang out. So all right. Alright guys, there you have it. <laughs> that was part is it 15? I, I have no idea. Of, of the uh, Mortal Kombat restoration. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, we got the monitor working. That's actually pretty damn big. <laughs> so, so now we can really move on with this restore project. We can finally get this stupid restore done. And really, all we have to do is put the thing back together. And, uh, well, actually, we got to wire it all up. That's, that's not going to be that trivial, actually, wiring that cabin up, because we're going to have to figure out the harness and wire all the buttons. There's a lot of buttons and stuff. So I don't know, next video, we'll get back to work on that. We're gonna put the decal on the control panel and then start wiring the whole thing up. But thank God we fixed the polo monitor. <laughs> Again, I gotta thank everyone that, that kind of suggested, um, <laughs> uh, that suggested uh, I replace those caps, including the arcade club tech. All right, let's move on and do some viewer mail. If you guys want to participate in the view ma viewer mail, you got to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. All right, so I got a lot of messages, a lot of emails, a lot of comments about the last video, okay? And, and let's address this, okay? Now, you guys might have noticed that that video came out on a certain day, okay? <laughs> But some of you didn't pick up on that and were confused. And apparently it was a really good April Fool's joke, like a great one. I think I kind of hit it out of the park because, no pun intended, because I fooled a lot of you guys, okay? But that was planned 100% in advance. 
I thought about doing that at least a week before the video, okay? But I got a ton of emails, you know, I'm not gonna single anyone out. Um, like this one here says it was the most unprofessional YouTube video he's ever seen and leaving people in the dark for 40 minutes. Guys, it was a joke, an April Fool's joke. Get a grip, get a sense of humor, okay? <laughs> I did the exact video I wanted to do. And you know what? It was hilarious to me. I showed my kids they were laughing their ass off. <laughs> they made me replay the video. It was funny, okay? <laughs> a joke. That's it. Nothing more. Don't read into it, okay? It's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> and then the other thing we need to talk about. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails like this. Where are you? Are you dead? Probably not. We missed your broadcast. Have a nice day. So yeah, I have not been releasing videos as much the last month or so. And what does that mean? Well, I mean, quite frankly, I, I just, I, I don't feel like it, okay? I, I just haven't been in the mood or have the motivation. So I kind of decided, you know what? If, I don't, if I'm not in the mood to do it, then I'm not going to do it. And I think that's going to be how it is going forward. You know, guys, and, and again, don't... Don't read into this. Don't take this personally, okay? This is me talking, okay? This is my life, right? And you know what? If I'm not in the mood to do it, I'm, I'm not going to do it. This is not a job for me. This is not a career, okay? I, I Trust me on this. This is not, right? And I've been doing it a long time. And honestly, nothing's changing. It's the same. How can it change? It's stuck in time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've replaced a lot of capacitors. We've toured a lot of arcades. So uh, anyway, I'm not going away. I'm not ending the channel. We're going to finish the Mortal Kombat. We're going to work in the garage this summer, but it's going to not happen every week. It might happen every week, but it might not. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that I'm not in the mood to do it that day. I, again, I've been doing this a long time. So, you know, don't read into this. Don't don't take it personally. It, it, again, this is just me talking. I just haven't been into it. Okay, that's it. That's nothing more. And also, I'm I am rethinking the basement. I'm giving you guys heads up. So I've sold four games. Uh, my buddy Jay's taking them. Uh, and the other side of the basement, I want to completely rethink and redesign. Um, we'll still have this, but over there, we're not going to have the games. That's kind of my plan. There might be a couple over there. I I don't know yet. It depends how many I get rid of. But I want to build like some desks and stuff over there and really spread out my work area for music and, and, and podcasting and all that stuff. So I just need more space. You know, when we brought down the Mortal Kombat and the Bally Sente, my I, I mean, it, it was the straw that broke the camels back down here. Like literally, it it's so cramped down here. I hate it. Okay, I got to get rid of stuff. I've got too much junk. I just do. I need to get rid of some games, and I am. And uh, so three from the basement are leaving, and then one from the garage, which is the uh, the Sega game. So, yes, that's what's happening. Okay, I am alive. I'm gonna be be doing videos, but it might not be every week. And I'm sorry, but I just if if I'm not into it, why do it, right? But I still, you know, like this hobby. I'm still in this hobby. So we'll we'll do the videos. Just don't plan on it every week. It might happen, it might not. So, but just know that I'm here. That's all I can tell you. Um, all right, let's go on here. And, and I printed out some other ones here. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong Audio. Hey, John, it's been a while since I reached out to you for some advice. Maybe you can help. The audio on my DK works, but it sounds crackly. I rebuilt the monitor in the audio section two years ago. I adjusted the B plus as well. Uh, I just put the DK remix and the audio is the same. I didn't put it on to see if it would solve the problem, but that was curious. Uh, any thoughts? Oh my God, was that a burp? I love the bat to the popcorn machine. <laughs> Looked like you had enough, Carl. Um, a lot of people did like what happened, by the way. <laughs> I did, it was funny. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so the Donkey Kong audio scratchy. Well, the first thing I would have said is uh, recap the audio amp, okay? And uh, there's a few things I guess you could try. Let's just assume it's not a board issue. It could be, though. Um, I mean, check your voltages. Just do that. You know, the audio is probably in some analog section or something. Actually, the audio is analog and digital, right? So is it all the audio? Is it is it some of the audio that's scratchy? Because um, the board has two sets of sounds, analog and digital sounds. Um, and sometimes one or the other doesn't work. So, okay, you got to recap the, 
the audio amp because Donkey Kong has a separate audio amp on the monitor. You got to recap that thing. You says you, you say you did. You got to check connections. I'll tell you right now, my Donkey Kong, the audio cuts out. It's because of a connection. Uh, I have a connection problem. The uh, the the uh, audio cable itself, the crimp is bad. So check the connections. Make sure it's solid. Obviously, the speaker. Do you have a good connection at the speaker? Check check that too. Um, is the speaker blown? It could be. You know, I, I've had a, a game or two with blown speakers. What was the last game we had a blown speaker in? Was it the Cloak and Dagger? I don't remember. I did have a blown speaker in something. Uh, but it, it can happen. So you got to just check all the... Really, the audio stuff is mostly simple if it's not a board issue. So I don't know. If, if anyone has any advice or has had the same experience, leave a comment below. Uh... Let's see, this is actually a cool one. This guy sent me an email to a um, to an eBay listing uh, that I think was in, like in the UK or something. It's, it says, hey John, check out this eBay auction link to a prototype machine. Not too sure if you've seen one before. So let me show you this thing. So I think this is kind of cool. This is like a, a Bally Midway, Miss Pac-Man cocktail sit down thingy. You know, you'll notice that it's not like for two players where you're facing head to head. It's like they took the parts from the upright and then like the marquee's up here, the bezel's like flat and the joysticks, the, the control panels. It's like literally they took the, 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 um, the upright parts and made this thing. But I believe that to be 1 million percent legit. There's also a baby Pac-Man one like that. Um, I think Bally was screwing around with, with cabinets like that for bars and stuff because it definitely has that, that kind of... Uh, a little more mature look about it. It's not so cartoony and stuff. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that thing. It went for, like, what, nine, 930 pounds on, on uh, eBay, which is, like, a little over uh, 1,200 bucks or something. So, I don't know. I thought that thing was pretty cool. So, hope you guys liked it. So, all right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we might be back next week. You know, I, I tell you, after getting that monitor working, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> And, and, and you know, in this the winter too. You know, the summer's is, is spring is here, man. So we're gonna want to be in the garage. Problem is, I brought the Mortal Kombat down here, so I can't even work in the garage on it. So I don't know. So we might be back next week, and we'll, we'll continue with the Mortal Kombat. I'm so happy that the monitor is fixed. Oh my God. So anyway, all right, guys, thanks for uh, for watching. Uh, again, if you want to send viewer mail, send them to John at johnsarcade.com. And uh, don't forget to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. We do that Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Riotcast network at riotcast.com. Podcast is completely free. Go to the iTunes or Google Play Store. Search for Video Game Outsiders. Download our app, okay? It's the best way to listen to all the new episodes. And then there's also bonus content every week. We do three extra episodes every week. You get those with a subscription for $1.99 a month, which is a deal for 12 extra podcasts a month, including the John Show with John, where I do go over some of the arcade stuff and viewer mail and whatever else is on my mind. You also get blank outsiders that Michelle and I do. And then Michelle's show, Love It or Hate It with Michelle, so or the Michelle Show. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're done. I'll see you very soon. Later, and bye!